I've been called. I am Gabriel. Oh, hello, Gabriel. It's so wonderful to have you here with us today. It is wonderful to be here. I assume there must be questions for me. Oh, yes, of course there are questions. But first, do you have a message for us that you would like to give us today? I, I have a message for humankind. Wonderful. You are all in the process of gr growing and defining yourselves. You are all in the process of finding who you really are in this life. You are learning about spirituality in a way that you've never learned it before. You are learning about positive and negative and how they interact and how one is influenced by the other. I know that all of you intend to bring goodness to the earth. And with your intentions comes growth. With your intentions comes actions. Because there is no intention that can be set forth that does not help you to cause an action of some sort. The mere intention of goodness, of understanding, of love, sends that out from you. It is an action within itself. And I thank you and give you honor and respect for following the ways of the heart and the light. God himself could not know all futures without you knowing yourself. Because why is it not your soul that is God? He gives you free will. So what does that mean? Does that mean you are predestined to be someone? Not necessarily. But you have all the potential to be a God in many ways. Is there any questions? Okay. Yes, I have Carolina first. There is also someone in the room after Carolina. Okay, we will certainly do that. Hello, Angel Gabriel. Greetings. Much love. Much love to you as well. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted to uh, uh, have this opportunity to thank you for being around us all the time. Um, I think about you all the time. Um, my gratitude for being around my son as well. Uh, you're very welcome here anytime. I love your presence. Thank and you. And I love you. The angels in all nine realms have come close to the earth as of recent to help the in ascension to grow and to ignite and to be greater. We will not leave your side. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you as well. Okay, what other now question? in the room with you? Yes, it is John. John, how are you, Gabriel? I am wonderful. So you're writing a class about how to connect to your angels. I thought, is there anything you'd like to tell the group about that class, the intentions of it, the people involved in it and what your expectations might be. I could go on and on about that. However, how to connect to your own personal angels. Now, you can connect to all angels in some ways because none of us are out of your jurisdiction. But there are certain angels 
that for certain needs can be called. And your personal angel you may not know the name of, but you can find out after they have come and ministered to you. You can definitely know that you've been ministered by an angel. Now, I and Michael and Raphael, Metatron, many of the other ones, Ariel, Gakiel, Zandalfon, Sadgiel, I could go on and on naming the angels of the heavens and all the different realms. But you have special angels for yourself. You were born with special angels around you. There is not one soul that can say that there is no angel around them unless they have denied that they exist or denied that God exists. If you do this, then they are not responsive because you are not responsive. But do not turn them away. They are of great help and of great love. Is there something else you would like me to tell? There, I could go on and on, but I do. It, to start one part of it goes for, for a long period of time. So the class that you're is there anything particular you'd like to say about that, or is that for a future time? It is for each individual to gra grasp and understand what they need to get out of that class. One person will find that they have received a blessing from the class, and someone else will discover that they have found protection from the class. Other people will find that they have found an opening of understanding to different realms and different things around them, to each his own, because you are all unique, just as you all have a unique vision of God. You all have a unique understanding of how the angels will work in your lives or be present or if you can even see them or not. Your belief system as we speak many times these days is part of all this. Your faith, what is your faith? Your faith is that invisible contract, that invisible connection to those things unseen and your and what can it do it can bring the unseen into the vision it can bring the unseen into your vision that's what faith can do that's what belief can do it can bring a vision of what cannot be seen to you and what does that do that encourages you. That edifies you. That gives you meaning. Because they would not appear to you or become visible to you without purpose. Okay. Is there anyone else? Yes, we have Shran. Shran. Hello, Gabriel. Thank you for coming today. Um, I had a question regarding um, the breath. Can you expand some more for our understanding about uh, breath during meditation or breath during daily living? Breath? Is, did you say breathing? Yes, breathing. Ah. Uh. The breath is very important. Of course, it sustains life as long as it has all the other things that comes with it. But it is most important. Humans have gotten away from their original deep breathing. They used to be very active. 
Many still are exercise and things of this nature. But it was more natural in the past. Your breathing was deep and full because you worked hard in the fields, collecting things, cooking, cleaning, in the past. And you've evolved beyond all this physicality in some ways but the deep breathing is still necessary why because it is part of who you are in your essence you must bring in the deep breathing so that it cleanses out portions of the body the lymphatic system some of the systems in the body depend on the activation of deep breathing. When you breathe deeply, you activate the entire body. You fill the entire body with a much healthier thought process. Not if you're in a gaseous area or somewhere that is it's harmful, but in nature. When you breathe deeply, you're filling your body with life-affirming energy. That energy of nature that is all around you. You're also activating systems within your body to cleanse themselves. The lymphatic system, for one. There are other systems as well. I could go on. But the brain also needs fresh air. The entire body needs fresh air. And if you breathe without depth your whole life, these things will tend to clog up. They will tend to become old and age, age much faster because you are not giving breath. You're not breathing the way you should. Three times a day you should at least breathe deeply and let the air fill you and hold that in and then breathe it far out. What happens when you breathe it out? You breathe out a lot of those toxins that are collecting in your body. It's so healthy to breathe deep. It's part of who you are. It may seem, seem unnatural now in this day and age for deep breathing to happen. However, it is not. You need it. It is part of your ancestry. It's part of your physiology. <laughs> is there any other questions? Yes. When you were talking about... Um us having angels with us is that our like a spirit guide angel or is it over and above that it's over and above that actually um you you do have a spirit guide and that but they're not necessarily angels angels are around you when you need them have any of you experienced what an angel can do your spirit guides can do things as well, but when it's an angel, you know it. And some of you just don't feel like you are good enough to have an angel. That is not so. Everyone is good enough to have an angel. Everyone has purpose. And that's why there's an angel. Do you understand? Yes. That is a very, very, I'm not going deeply into that right now. There's so much depth that could go into that. Because as you personally accept your angelic portion, because that angel is attached to you in more than one way. Do you understand that? Yes. That's why they are there. We could de delve deep into that, and the class will do that. 
but you yourself must be apportioned to your soul and your angel and all the balances around spiritually. When you balance out spiritually, how can not the rest of your body help but become a little more balanced? Now, there are those that have contracts with maladies and things of this nature. However, remember, there is free will. Free will can block out some of those things. But if it is a necessary thing for you to carry these burdens, then in the Oversoul you will understand why. There's six questions I think in the I cannot read that. <laughs> okay. We do There's have a question. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I'm just wondering if you had any messages that may help me in the journey that may help others as well. There are there are messages to help you and others. And that is Connect yourself with the faith that things can happen in a way that will affirm you and make you whole. You must believe it. You must believe it. You cannot be whole without believing that you can be. You cannot be whole without believing that you can be. It just does not happen. So, Gather up your faith. Gather up your love. Gather up all those things within you that are positive and bring them out and share them. Because in doing so, you also heal yourself. Continue. Okay, we have Sheer next. Hello, Gabriel. Greetings. Greetings. I actually once channeled you. Yes. Um, I was wondering if you have a message for me and if you can tell me about which uh, angels am I connected to, like my personal um, angels, as you said it. There are many connected to you angelically. But your most private and personal angel is La Sangye. Okay. But you also have Gabriel, myself. <laughs> you also have Raphael, Michael. We all come to you at one time or another. Okay. There For are many. For a certain purpose? I did not hear that. You all a come to me. purpose. Yeah. Oh, of course. There is always always purpose for our presence. I see. And do you have a message for me? Not at this time. But I oh. will have a message for you when we speak again. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, and much love to you, and gratitude. Excellent. Hello, Gabriel. This is Guru Dan. Yes. Have a couple of questions from members, if it's okay. That is well. Yes. Uh, a question from our friend Astrid. She asks, "How the members of the group should best use the energy of the new moon upcoming, and also maximize the energy of the upcoming spring equinox, and if there are any other important planetary humankind ascension updates that you can offer?" There. It has been an unusual er era of power for the equinoxes and the full moons. Since the fall of your last year, and even before then, the powers of the earth have been increased and multiplied. And the new moon and the solstice, I believe, fall together again, do they not? Yes, this, I believe so. Mm -hmm. These are two different energies that when combined are very powerful. 
And when happening on the same time, like you have in this last era of solar powers and alignments, grasp onto these energies to fulfill the great missions that are coming to your lives. Bring in that energy to fulfill your purpose in this life. It is a time, the beginning of the ascension is so important. And so these things have fallen together to make you more important and more powerful. The people alive at this time will have energy such as never been experienced except for thousands of years ago. And therefore will help you along your way in your purpose to keep the ascension moving. And many of you will gather a meaning for your life and gather something more than just a normal existence. And the future will capture this, for you will not be forgotten, many of you. This is a time that will be remembered. I have a question from uh, member Jasmina. She wants to know if you have any messages for her and what number is her vibration and what does a vibration number mean? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any of that. If you can uh, offer clarity, that would be awesome. Each person has their own vibrational energy. Some people are able to achieve great numbers of vibration, such as 10 or 12 or 14, and some people are not able to do that. Some are only able to achieve nines and tens. Why is this? It is because of how their contract was made before they entered this realm. Now, to tell you what your vibrational number would be would actually not be giving you enough information. Because I could say you're at a 4.2, but if you're if you are able to reach a 15, that's not very high. But if you're only able to reach a 9, then your 4.2 is almost halfway to your fullest purpose. Does that make sense to you? Yes, now, it does. Do not be so intrigued by your vibration at this time. Yours is very high, Jasmina. Just know that it is getting greater and that the love, the more love you can generate for your, from yourself, the greater the possibility is for it to grow. You see, love is the vibration that's measured. Love is the vibration that's measured. When God looks down, do you think he sees that you stole the candy bar? Do you think he sees that you told a lie? Do you see, think he sees that you are late for work? What he's looking at is the potential for your love to come out of you and into the world. The example of pure fire that can change the world. He's not looking for these tiny little insignificant things, but your love. Not to say that you should go out and steal a candy bar and that it won't matter. That's not what I'm saying. But these are insignificant compared to the love that you generate for one another. Bond yourself together in this. And you, you know what? If you bond yourself together in love and greatness and fire, there will be no need to steal a candy bar. There will be no need to worry about these small in, 
unimportant things. There will only be bringing yourself together with others and burning for love and burning for the ascension and burning for God. All other things will melt away. It's not that you stop smoking. It's not that you stop drinking. These things are good. However, the love that you generate far surpasses any bad habits, swearing, or th anything. And you know what? It will burn these things away eventually. And you won't want to do it. You could if you want. But you won't have to. Do you understand? Be on fire with love. Thank you, Gabriel. That's a wonderful message. Okay, Christine. Continue. Hello. Hello. And blessings to you. I and was blessings to you. <laughs> I was wondering if you could tell me. Um, I do recce on um, animals as well as my own um, pets, and I don't really see a change in them. Does that mean it's not working, or that it's just the way I'm looking at it? It is the way you're looking at it. All healing helps. Now, you may not know how it's helping. Are you thinking, oh, I haven't seen a physical change, so there I must not be helping physically. That is not necessarily true. Okay. So if someone were to look at you each day, would they know how you are feeling inside? No. Not necessarily. When you, you look at your animals, do you know if they're happy or sad? I think so. Yes. Do you know if they're feeling sick? Yeah. Uh, well, see, that's why I'm wondering if um, it's changing because I still see um, them uh, with the same uh, limping or something like that. So I, I think I'm not... You don't stop. It is... It is not for you to stop. Okay. They get your energy. It could be affecting them in ways you have no idea. Even if they still limp, it might hurt less. Even if they seem the same, there might be differences and changes. Do not doubt that your healing energy is any less powerful than anyone else's. Okay. Much Thank love you. to you because uh -huh. one, when you do your healing on these animals, it also heals yourself in some way. Believe that. I still have arthritis. It's not working. <laughs> That's because you said it's not working. Oh, it's working. Excellent. <laughs> You must believe that it works. If you say that it is not working, it won't. Okay. But it is working, but you just have to realize it. All right, Keith. <laughs> Humans. <laughs> Much love. Much love to you. <laughs> Much health. Get better. Okay, we have Sarah next. Hello, Ar Archangel Gabriel. Hello. Love to you. <laughs> Love to you. I just want to say thank you for helping me on ah. my artistic journey. I have so many things to do. There um, are many things for you to do. And thank you for helping many. Oh, thank you. Um, I was just wondering if there are any messages for my upcoming journey. Um, 
Yes, you can feel what I'm feeling at the moment. Yes, you are feeling quite nervous and and uh, jerky, nervous and jerky, because you are not sure how these things are going to come to pass. Yes. I understand. Be strengthened by the fact that it is necessary for you to be who you are and give the messages and healings that you are going to give. Do not doubt that these are not going to happen. Why would God not want you to spread the blessing of love and healing? So therefore it will come about, perhaps in more miraculous ways than you can possibly understand. Thank you very much. Um, is there Spirit any... is with you. Thank you. Yes, I thank them all the time. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> and um, is there anything I need to know before I go? It's only money. It's only money. Do not think that it is a great thing for money to appear. Money is available from everywhere. It's only money. But the gifts that you will give are much greater than that. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm to be traveling with another person, am I not? There could be someone else, yes. Okay. It is not necessary, though. But it would be a help. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Much love to you. Much love. Okay. Nevi, are you ready? Yes. Uh, hello, uh, Gabriel. How are you? I am well. Um, I want to ask you about an uh, experience I had a few times. Um, before falling asleep, sometimes I drift into uh, seeing images and having a negative feeling. Sometimes it expresses in a physical way, like a hard, hardship breathing and, and stuff. And last time it happened, I called upon you and uh, Michael until it passed. Um, do you have any guidance on how to distance myself from uh, those uh, situations? Before you even lay down, call on us. Why call on us afterwards? Call on us before. Then you will not have the heaviness to deal with. You will not have anything or any problems. But before you lay down, thank God that you're going to have a restful sleep. Thank God that this heaviness is not going to be there. Thank us for coming to help you. Not that we need your thankfulness, but that's we, it's something for us to hear, something for us to work with so that we can help you. Yes, I understand. Why, why not avoid it altogether? It, it happens uh, so rarely that I don't even take it into account. Well, pray to God before you go to bed every night and it won't happen anymore. Okay, thank you very much. I pass the mic. Hello, Angel Gabriel. Hello. Yes. Elena. Uh, much love. I would, I would like to ask, um, I want to start recording songs. And, and always there's um, some, something that happens to prevent me from going to the studio. Can you help me out with how I, how I can easily go on this path? Yes. Thank God that he is going to get you there. And thank God ahead of time for that. The thing is, I see right now, it was not the right time for you to go. The reason why you did not go, it was not ready quite yet. When you do go, it will be the perfect time. It will be the time when things will happen in a way that are ju is just perfect. 
and you will have no doubt that this was the right moment. But do not worry, it will come. Do not doubt that something is holding you back, but that the perfect moment just has not arrived. And that's what I see. Thank you. Much love. You're welcome. Okay. Then I, want to, I want to talk about that for a moment. Some people feel that they have been held back from doing things, held back from certain things for so long. Perhaps it's not the right time. Perhaps there is a time that will come together to make it so much greater. Perhaps the moment that it is coming into culmination or into perfection has not arrived yet. Be patient and keep faith. Sometimes it's not the right time. Yes. Okay, we have John Ali next. Continue. Hello, Gabriel. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Hello I hear Gabriel. you. You were soft, but I hear you. Oh, well, I'll see if I can change that up a little bit. That's better. That's better. Is this even better? Yes. Okay, great. First of all, I... It's wonderful to put voice to communication with you, and I thank you for being here today. Thank you, and thank you for being here today. You're quite welcome. I do have several questions, but the most important for me is a question that has come from reading the Oracle of Ephesus through Franklin. Yes. And I, my question is, is God's knowingness and omnipotence furthered by our own soul's experiences, each of our yes. soul's experiences? Okay, so thank you, because I, I think that settles my unsettledness. <laughs> well, let me tell you more about that. Okay. God, in his infinite wisdom about each soul, has made them each individual and each special in a way that no one else can possibly imagine. And you may say, oh, we're all very much alike in some ways. Or all of us have certain similarities. But your uniqueness is special. Do not doubt that. God's uniqueness in you is there for a purpose. And now you are trying to find what that purpose is. Exactly. I find that you are unique and that it will be something surprising and loving and wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that is one of the things, one of my wonderments that I'm trying hard to focus on, that just to... Allow. The thing is, many people have many different thoughts about what they want to do or what their purpose is, but they have to accept, they have to accept the highest joy in their life and work with it. And that will lead them to many, many jo other joys. Does that make mm -hmm. sense to you? Uh, in in a short way, a small way, it makes sense. How do we learn to accept joy in the fullest sense? Ah, you learn to accept joy by accepting the greatest resonation that comes to you. What is it that you want to do the most? I know that many others have spoken about that in your world, but it is so true. God has given you a greatest joy. Maybe more than one thing is a greatest joy. But the thing is, you must believe, you must understand that that will lead into a greater life as well. My greatest joy is to serve God. However, I am learning or have been, it's been suggested that um, 
I'm serving man rather than God, but my belief system is that God is in every man. So by serving the needs of man, I am serving God. Correct. Thank you. Do not let anyone tell you who you are or what you are doing. You know in yourself what your joys are and what your mission is. If you are serving man out of the love of God, how is that wrong? Well, um, good question. Thank you. <laughs> because I'm also finding out more about myself. And as I find out more about myself, I, I feel like I'm becoming more integrated as a human. But that integration includes my spirituality, which is of God. Who you are is the most important thing in this life. Why? Because God made you. God is your soul. Find yes. out who you are in God, and you cannot go wrong. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And one final uh, question. Do you have any messages for me from anyone? There is one. <laughs> and they say this is just the beginning for you you are now just now starting to understand who you really are and that is the beginning of a great joy thank you very much Gabriel and thank you thanks to whomever sent that message it was someone from a past life, a relative. Oh, okay. Are you able to say who? They will tell you themselves. Great. Thank you very much. I look forward to that time. And blessings to you and all those who have come through you for me. God bless you. Okay. I have a question now from Slava. Yes. He says, I wonder how you are to perceive Earth in different ways. Some of us called Earth like kindergarten. Some of us called, oh, excuse me here. But what was the Earth for you? I uh, see Earth like a beautiful crystal of collective consciousness, and I believe Earth is connected with many, many crystals. Is it correct? Please okay. share your perspective. Earth to me is many things. It is not just one thing because there are many different kinds of life, many different kinds of existences on Earth. To me, when I first came to Earth, it was like a small child. It needed nurturing. It needed love. It needed feeding. It needed wisdom and guidance. And it had all these other elements along with it. Of course, you just don't see a child when you look at the earth. You see the trees, the mountains, the waterfalls, the great beauty of the earth as well. That is not just mankind, but it is all life in general. So when I look at the earth, I see a beautiful con beautiful collage of life and energy and lights coming from all different perspectives of different colors and different energies and yes the crystals and beautiful connections to the stars and the other planets earth is just one place that is among millions and millions of places and I see it as a beautiful, beautiful kaleidoscope of energies and understandings. Oh, yes, that sounds so beautiful. Okay, one more question. And is it correct that our angels are our aspects? Ah, not necessarily. Your aspect from the soul level comes from God not from angels angels were created so therefore you may find that your angel 
upholds or complements your aspect, but is not the direct aspect of you. Mm, that's beautiful. Okay, that's it from Slava, and now we have Corel. Uh, yes, hello. Hello. I was visited earlier this morning by a being. Um, I was not able to see him, but I was able to touch him. I was wondering if you could have any information on who this being was. This being was from the canine species. That species seems to have a lot of interest in you in many aspects. They, they find you a fascinating person, and you're very, very inclusive of them. And so that is another area that they find very um, good. They want to be around you. They want to know more about you. And the name of the being was Shunskala. Was it male or female? I could not tell. It was a male. Uh, is there any information that I should know about at this time? There is information coming to you. But it is not my place to deliver it. But it is coming. Ah, yes. okay. Thank you. You are welcome. OK, now I have a question from Sam. He ah. says, I have two spirit guides and two angels. Can you help me find out who are the two angels and what specifically or what specialty they have in guiding me. <laughs> yes, I can name them for you. But you should already know their specialties because they work with you on them from day to day. One is on your growth of your spirit and on who you are in a personal way. The other one is how to bring all this energy to you as well. There is much more energy that the second angel has that you have not yet accepted. But it is coming. Wonderful. Okay, from Michelle. Yeah, thank you so much for all you do in my life. I call on you, Michael and Raphael, when healing is there, any others that would complete the group, is it possible for you to tell me the names of my daughter and son's personal angel so they can connect with them? One moment, please. With permission, I can tell you that your daughter's personal angel is Ladkiel. And your son's personal angel is Eskiel. Okay, and are there, are, are there any messages for her? Just continue on your path. <coughs> your emotions have been strong. You have been up and you have been down. But your healing remains constant no matter what. Yes, that's wonderful news. Okay, Ina, you are next. Hello, Gabriel. Yes. This is Ina. <sighs> an honor no. speaking to you. It's an honor speaking to you. Um, do you have a message from me or from you or from someone else? You're going through some changes at this time. And let them come as they may. <coughs> it may be difficult at first. 
but let the things that are supposed to fall away fall away. I do not know who that was from, but it did come down through this area. Does it make any sense to you? Um, I think so, yes. <laughs> Very well. Um, thank you. Um, just another question. Um, when people decide to end their life before their time, um, can they go immediately into the light or do they stuck here? That depends. Let me explain. Those that end their life prematurely cannot move through the veil quickly. They must process all the different things that life has brought them first before that they can understand the glory of the Oversoul or what you might call heaven or might call anything that Earth calls the afterlife. There is a sort of detention that they must deal with because they are not ready to come into the afterlife. And this may take some time sort of detention. because it is not a pleasant ordeal. But eventually, they will come into the afterlife. But it is not as easily done. Do they have to repeat their lesson? Ah, a question was, do they have to repeat their lesson? It depends on which lesson they did not learn. Perhaps they will choose to repeat that lesson in an earlier life or in the next life, or perhaps they will wait. That is up to them in the Oversoul once they get there. So people do stuck here when they, when they end the life. They cannot go right into the light and yeah. reincarnate basically again. There are some that choose to stay around the earthly realms. They feel it that they are protecting someone or they feel that there is a need for them not to move into the light for some reason. These people are not at rest. But it what about... Not, it what not, about, does not necessarily mean that they committed suicide. Some have. And are not willing to do the process yet. But there are there are those that want to stay around the earthly realms and they are the ones you call ghosts. Okay, what about those that know about the light and that actually want to go into the light? Are they able to just go after that? Or do they not, stop? What was the question? I didn't... So when people end their lives, um, when they say, okay, enough, and then um, they know about no. the light and they want to go into the light. They don't want to stay here. They want they want to yes, go into they the want to go into the light but like i said there will depending on the individual and what has happened and the reasons for them taking their life there will be a detention and they have to go through some things to understand that they are not ready for the, the light yet and it might take some time for them to get there but they will eventually get there okay what what would that be in my case in your case, you are still alive. Yes, still right now, yes. Would I be able to go into the light or would I have a det detention? Everyone that ends their life prematurely will have the detention. Now, for what reasons and for how long, that is determined by God. Okay, thank you. That's You're it. You're welcome. Okay, thank you so much. And now Kim would like to speak with you, if she could, please. Yes. Hello, Archangel Gabriel. Hello. I know you spend a lot of time with my daughter, and I thank you and appreciate your love for her so much. 
I know she's safe in your arms and within your wings and she's journeying and just loving spirit with you. So I want to say thank you so, so much. I appreciate it. It was her that started you on your path. Yes, it was. Yes. She but. is so grateful that you have come to a great purpose and will continue to move forward and become beloved by the world. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. Much love. Okay, and now can I ask for a blessing for us today? There is another question first. Okay. Yes. Um, I recently had an experience with my mom in the hospital with Raphael, my dad, and I just wanted to say uh, thank you for that. You are welcome. Raphael is close to your father, and so he is the one that had brought him into that area and into that blessing. Thank you. Yes. I'm wondering about um, the length of working with somebody and doing healing work, how do you know how long to keep doing healing work? I had a friend who had a heart attack and I can't communicate with her because of her husband doesn't want to <coughs> So I'm wondering how often or how, how do I know? The question is, I don't think you could hear it, is how long should he work with someone at a distance that he is not in communication with that has had a heart attack and he was sending energy to them for healing. Now the answer to that is never stop. Even if they are well, even if their heart attack has been taken care of, all can use that energy. And if one has had a heart attack or an ailment such as this, energy given is always appreciated and always helpful. Continue just to send her energy for as long as you feel necessary. That would be up to you because she could always use it. And how about just regular patients? Is there a time frame that you should keep? Working? It's not a time frame. Um, when, you're <coughs> when you're working to heal someone, it's not a time frame that you should be looking at. It's an energy frame. If you feel them taking your energy and the energy of the universe and the energy of all those that are helping, you know that you need to continue with that healing. If you feel the energy is starting to wane or get less, then you know that the healing is about done. But that does not mean you should stop sending the energy. It just lets you know when the energy is not flowing as strongly and lets you know that the healing is about done. Does that answer that question? Very good. Okay, and if everybody is finished in the room there, then could we please have a blessing? Yes. Thank you so much. We so much appreciate it. Thank you. It was very nice to be here. I can feel the love and joy and kindness. Let's pray on that area. Yes. Dear God, Father of the universe, Mother, Father God, bring down to the earth this special love and joy and light that is necessary for the world to be healed. For the world to continue and become a beautiful light within the universe. Already we have seen so many beautiful things come from this planet. But we've already seen also dark things as well. Let us cover those dark things with light. We praise you and thank you for all the goodness, love, and prayers that have been answered in your name. Let us be of good health and of good joy towards one another 
and always giving thanks for the things that are coming, for the blessings that are for here for you to take and to use. Do not ever believe that nothing is out of your reach because God in his great abundance can give you whatever you need if it is his will. We thank you and praise you for all those things that make you God and make you perfect and make you omnipotent, omniscient, all-loving. Bring to us a sense of understanding. Let our perception of you grow greater so that we may know more of you and know how much more love there is. With all this we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Gabriel. You are welcome. Now can we bring Jim back for us? Absolutely. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Oh, bless you too and everyone. <laughs>